Uh, Robert Kennicott was an early explorer and naturalist. Um, he died in 1866 near the Arctic Circle under mysterious circumstances. He actually he drew some lines in the sand, he placed his compass in the middle of that circle, um, and it seemed to be pointing in a direction. So. Uh, that was the reason it was suspected that he was poisoned or had taken strychnine. Um, in 2001, his body was exhumed by Smithsonian scientists, and it was determined uh, it was not mysterious circumstances at all that led to his cause, of, the cause of death. Uh, what we have here is a 3D print replica of Robert Kennicott's skull. We 3D scanned the skull to make a, a 3D printed replica. Then we were able to use this replica, uh, and we put this in the hands of a traditional sculptor, and then she was able to make the forensic reconstruction using traditional methods. So this was a great experience uh, marrying modern technologies with traditional methods. Traditionally, uh, the skull would have been used uh, for that reconstruction, but whenever you're putting clay or handling a skull or any human remains at all, that puts that object at risk. With the 3D scanning, we have a laser arm scanner. Uh, so this arm scanner uh, is very much like a barcode scanner. So we have a uh, laser line that's being projected onto the skull. It's actually a series of points. And what we're doing is we're capturing the geometry of Robert Kennicott's skull right now in real time. Skulls are a particularly challenging object to scan because they're so geometrically complex. You could imagine scanning a basketball, we could reach all the surfaces of that object very quickly. Whereas with a skull, we have a lot of convoluted surfaces and undercuts that are quite difficult to uh, reach. And the laser beam is bouncing off uh, the object and back into a sensor. The time it takes for that laser beam uh, to bounce can be equated to a very precise measurement. So what we're doing here, as I lay the laser across the surface of the object, we're collecting thousands and thousands of XYZ coordinates. The reason that we want to do this is to be able to tell the story of people lost to history um, and be able to tell that story in a really visceral way.